I put out a list of the top 10 players in the NBA. Uh, this was, I think, right before Team USA started exhibition play. I think they played a game against Canada, their first exhibition game, about a week after I, I or first week I took off. Uh, but the week before that, I did my top 10 players of the league. I had LeBron James at number six, which I think was higher than most people would put him. Most people, if you look at the list, LeBron is like eight or nine, kind of in that, certainly in the bottom half of the top 10. I got to see how the Olympics plays out because for what it's worth, it is exhibition play. But if this keeps up, Team USA does what they're going to do, and that's win gold medal. He's still the best American player as the oldest player in basketball, and that doesn't make sense. LeBron James <laughs> is responsible. Uh, you could argue singularly responsible for Team USA. I, I saw Chris Mannix put out this tweet uh, that LeBron is singularly responsible for the Team USA entering the Olympic, not entering the Olympics on a two-game losing streak. Because they, they're on the verge of suffering the most brutal loss you could imagine to South Sudan, who doesn't even have a an, an, an indoor basketball court. They almost lost that team as a 42-point favorite. LeBron saves him at the end with a uh, with, with the layup with about eight seconds left, but I thought he wasn't clutch. Um, and then the next game, against, it gets Germany a more than formidable opponent. LeBron hits some, some threes. There's a, hits a three, then he backs down a, a defender for Germany, and this absolutely just plays bully ball to the bucket, uh, gets the deuce, and that essentially wraps it up for Team USA to finish 5-0 and in exhibition play. But I could not help but thinking is, is two things, watching LeBron doing what he's been doing for Team USA. On one hand, I, with respect to the Jordan crowd, and again, I know I say I don't want to engage too much in the GOAT discussion until LeBron's done. But gosh, it is it is really tempting not to just say this guy's the I I don't know if we can I can emphasize this enough. He's the oldest player in the league. He's he's going to be 40 in five months. And he's the best player on arguably the best team USA roster ever. On a roster, let me maybe I can put it into context this way. On a roster full of, obviously, number one options across the board. LeBron, KD, Steph, Anthony Edwards, MB, guys like that. Basketball, the, the, these guys are going to play the easiest one month of basketball they've ever played in their lives since high school. Because all the defensive attention is not going to one singular guy or two guys. It's, hey, who, who takes the last shot? Whoever's open. I mean, that's, that's what made the Warriors when they, back in 2017 and 18, so darn dangerous is... You had Steph, Clay, uh, you know, Kevin Durant to be able to, to get you in and out of, uh, you know, offensive sets. In a, again, on a team where offense is easier for these players than it's ever been since high school, LeBron's putting up the best output. And by the way, he's followed closely by his partner in crime in Los Angeles, Anthony Davis, which transitions me to my next point because we're about to, I'm about to show a graphic right here that the first thing I think of when I see LeBron doing what he's doing is, good God, this is insane. The second thing I see is, God, the Lakers are incompetent. Can I put up this list? These are the, the major uh, uh, statistical, uh, you know, accounting stats, if you will. We could put this up for the best players on Team USA. LeBron leads them in points. Anthony Davis leads them in rebounds. LeBron leads them in assists. Anthony Davis leads them in blocks. Anthony Edwards, not a Laker, leads them in steals. LeBron leads them in field goal percentage. 63% is insane. LeBron streaks 63% and leading them in points and assists. So all the six major statistical categories, a Laker is leading five of the six. LeBron's got three. Anthony Davis has two. And in the last two years, and we'll look at the macro, but the last two years, LeBron and Anthony Davis have been healthy basically throughout. Yeah, LeBron will have a knickknack injury. Same with Anthony Davis, but they'll have a couple of management games here or there. By and large, they're healthy. They're available. They qualify for all NBA. They're ready to go. Seven seed in 2023. Yes, they make their run to the conference finals, but they get swept by the eventual champion Nuggets. And then this year, seven seed, uh, 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 seven seed this season, against a Denver Nuggets team that I saw KCP, Contavious Caldwell Pope, today on my social media. He was on Draymond Green's podcast. And he said, man, we were gassed. Lakers should have won that series. So he openly admits it. The Lakers, 
looks like they might have actually been the better team. Maybe in that regard, I was a little bit wrong when I predicted Nuggets in five. I was right in the result, but for, for the wrong reasons. We could look at the Lakers with LeBron James because I hear all the time, oh my goodness, the, 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 the LeBron haters out there, they're absolutely insufferable. Is, man... <laughs> LeBron's running things in LA. I mean, they they just have a hard cap on how far they can go. LeBron's running the show. First of all, no, he's not. Secondly, I think bet the Lakers wish the wish that he was, because if LeBron was running things, that well, Westbrook happens. Yep, and Ty Lue also happens. Ty Lue becomes the head coach in 2019 if LeBron had a say in it. So let's keep that in perspective. Let's also keep in perspective that. Prior to LeBron joining the Lakers in 2018, between the between Kobe Bryant's Achilles tear at, at the end of the 2013 season, between that and LeBron arriving, record-wise, if my notes serve me correctly, the Lakers were the worst team in the league. The, the purple and gold, worst team in basketball prior to LeBron's arrival. And even when he has arrived, it has been... It has been a roller coaster. It's, it's it's six flags. Six seasons, six flags. That's what we're going to call it. Lakers in the LeBron era. First year, they go 37 and 45. Now, LeBron did get that hurt that year, but that was a team that should have gotten to the playoffs in, in the Western Conference. The Clippers with Patrick Beverly and Danilo Gallinari should not have gotten there. Point is, next, next year, hey, they win the, win the whole darn thing. So you, can't, you cannot say LeBron and Lakers era was a failure. You got a title out of it. But the next year, there's injuries to LeBron, Anthony Davis, they go down in round one. The next year, they trade for Russell Westbrook, which was a disastrous move, missed the playoffs. The next year, they make some mid to late season tweaks at the trade deadline, make the final, or sorry, make the conference finals, get swept. The next year, first round exit. And as I've said often on the show, I can make a case that we think of the Lakers as this, uh, you know, Glamour franchise of American professional sports. Lakers, Cowboys, Yankees. The, the, the glamour franchises, tier one in terms of, of, of merchandise sales, of recognizability, you know, value around the world. Lakers are absolutely 1,000% in that tier. And I can make a case that the Cleveland Cavaliers did a better job as a front office in terms of putting real legitimate contenders around LeBron James than the Lakers did. And that is including, by the way, seven years of nonsense by the Cleveland front office in which LeBron was carrying garbage rosters to 60 wins a season and got them to the finals at 23 years old back in 2007. But 2015, part of the injuries, that was absolutely a contender. Many think they would have beaten my Warriors in the 2015 finals. 2016, they did. LeBron was awesome. So was Kyrie Irving and the, and the ancillary pieces followed along. 2017, go back and look statistically, LeBron, Kyrie, and Love were all better in the 17 finals than the 16 finals. The problem was they ran into the, the, the greatest team ever assembled. Steph, KD, Clay, Draymond, Stillness Prime, Iguodala, Kurt, the whole bit. In the 2018, I don't think the Cavs were contenders, but I can argue that the Cavs, in 11 years that LeBron played for them, were only contenders three of those years. But the Lakers, it's been even less. Now, yes, I get that less time. But obviously, 2019-20, they were top-of-the-line contenders. Ended up winning the whole darn thing. And that's about where it ends. You can make the case 2021, but every team has an injury-riddled season. That that happens. I mean, see, Golden State had two injury-riddled uh, seasons. It happens all the time in professional sports. But I, I cannot help... But watch this. And LeBron has to be thinking in the back of his head, you've got to be kidding me. Anthony Davis is crushing it in exhibition play, and you know reason to believe that he won't do so come, come Paris. I'm crushing. I'm leading in three major statistical categories. Points, assists, field goal percentage. Best player on the team. And the team I play for, we are swept out of the Western Conference Finals and the gentlemen swept by the same squad who loses to a team with Rudy Gobert on, on it. And that's where the Lakers are at today. It, it goes back to what I said when J.J. Redick was hired. I think J.J. Redick's going to be an excellent coach. I, I believe that to my core. I just don't think the Lakers will give him the leeway to be that way. I don't see any reason why, it, it, with another first-round exit, or dare I say maybe the Lakers missed the playoffs. They've done it twice since LeBron's been there. 
that he's not like, because he's on a, he's got the opt out in the second year. He's going to basically sign one and one contracts for the rest of his career. That he doesn't say summer of 25. Okay. I'm, I'm kind of hitting a brick wall right now or hitting a hard ceiling in terms of what we can do. I don't trust Palinka. I don't trust Jeannie Buss. Let me go to a team. Let me go to Miami. Let me go to a, a you know, Philadelphia probably won't have the cap space, but let me go to a, 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 a squad, a roster, a true top of the line contender with smart people in the front office that could put legitimate pieces around me and let me get at least one more championship before I retire. Because as I've said often, there's no, what's the point of LeBron playing at this point? He's got the money. Uh, he's got the accomplishments, all time leading scorer. He's got the longevity. He has, he doesn't have to prove to us that he can, his body can sustain years and years of elite NBA uh, of, you know, play. He's in it to win it at this point. That's an, not that it ha that hasn't always been the number one goal, but at this point it feels like it's kind of the only goal. He's going to play with his son. Great. He'll have checked that off the list. Bronny will do just fine on his own next year with the Lakers uh, developmental squad. So I, I just think it is a, man, this Olympus looks bad in the Lakers front office. I mean, it looks really bad. We could talk about their inactivity during free agency, basically pulling a Dallas Cowboys in that stretch. But my gosh, it, it, this is a, it has been a brutal, to, to the first round loss to Denver, to now it has been a brutal three-month stretch for the Lakers. Thanks so much for watching the show on YouTube, and be sure to go click that big red subscribe button and check out the other clips and full shows from Carving It Up Live as well as our other incredible content creators here on the Grid Network.